Now, the Guinea-Bissau Writers Association gathers dozens of people who come from different backgrounds but share the same goal, to improve the literature of this small West African country. With one of the world's lowest literacy rates, these poets and novelists have a hard task ahead of them. Ricky of Shrya Cripples from Bissau. Each month, members of the Guinea-Bissau Writers Association meet to share their newest works and support the country's small but dedicated literary scene. With only a 55% literacy rate, it is hard for authors to reach a large audience, say association members. Still, writers such as Rita Ye say they are determined. The writing community here is very small, or it's very young. Young in the sense of there, there are not so many people that write books or publish books. What I do think is that there is many, peoples, many people who write poems, stuff like that, but they don't publish their work. So I would like to see more young people, more people publishing what they do, what they write. She says despite the challenges, writers can help improve their country and forge a stronger national identity. The former Portuguese colony has been plagued by military coups and instability and is ranked among the bottom 10 countries on the United Nations Human Development Index. There are some things that still hold us down, that hold us back. We can go forward because we are very attached to the past. And we, we are still living about uh, independence, the war. Of the 40 members of the group, at least half are poets, a style that meshes well with the region's rich history of oral storytelling. Poetry also provides a practical platform for shorter works for authors who are busy with day jobs. One of those poets is Manuel da Costa, a major in Guinea-Bissau's army. He has also written about the country's drug trafficking underbelly, a dangerous topic. But he says the nature of poetry allows him to sidestep any trouble he might encounter. Poetry language is subjective. When you are writing, it's only you who knows what you are writing. Anyone who is reading it can have their own interpretation. Another author, Antonio Afonso Te, has just published a book on how to write in Creole, the local language that is based on Portuguese. He says learning how to write in Creole and integrating that into the national education program can help develop the country and its literary scene. I need to do it because uh, I think that uh, the Creole should be introduced for uh, the education in Guinea-Bissau because most of people speak Creole. And another thing that is important is that the, the teachers then they, uh, they dominate better Creole than the, other language, than the other language that they use for teaching. Whether it's poetry or novels, in Creole or Portuguese, the writers of this country hope they can use their craft to help Guinea-Bissau turn a new page toward greater development. Ricky Shryock for VOA News, Bissau.